Hey guys, I'm Rizgrestar, and how about we play West of Loathing? So, I don't know too much about this game. Really, like, nothing at all. I think that, I mean, obviously enough, it's like, Stickman kind of art style, it seems like. Uh, it's, uh, western sort of cowboy themed, right? And, um, I think there are RPG elements to this, but aside from that, I really don't know what I'm getting myself into here. I know that I've heard good things about it before. Uh, my younger brother particularly likes this game. I bought it for him at some point, and my friend bought it for me, so thank you, friend. Um, but we're gonna get started and see what it's like, so new game. There we go. Wanted for protagonizing. Oh, no. What do I change your kick? What do I want to do? Okay, let's see you change your character. How do I do that? Well, I shot it and it didn't do anything. Am I supposed to be shooting these things? Does that actually matter at all? What is up with that? What's the reward? Why is it going up? Okay, change your character. Can I not? Oh, I shoot these up here. Interesting. Oh, so this is how I choose between them. Male and female, okay. And then I get random names like this? Is that what it is? Edit your name. Can I do that? No. So what do I... I'm looking at the names now. I just have to find one that I like. There, I'll go with this one. I'll be Grizzly Walker. I spent way too much time picking a name out, so we're gonna get into it. Plays Grizzly Walker? Yeah! Yeah, we're doing it. We're going in. Okay, I had the strangest stream. I was choosing a character class. Uh, cow Puncher, Bean Slinger, Snake Oiler. Huh. Okay. You know, I think Grizzly Walker would be a Cow Puncher, right? <laughs> Cow punchers solve their problems with their fists, whether it's shaking them at a disagreeable feller in a, dis a disreputable saloon, or using them to punch a slightly more disagreeable feller in a slightly less reputable saloon. You've heard that cow punchers are in demand out west since the cows came home, which stands to reason. The cows aren't gonna punch themselves after all. <laughs> yeah, let's... You know what, here, I do want to read the others just to see what they are, but I'm pro I think I'm gonna go with cow puncher anyway. Magic and cooking are inextricably intertwined in loathing, and the bean slinger is the mystical master of both. You've heard there's a shortage of cooks out west since the cows came home, due to most of the cooks having been brutally killed by the cows. <laughs> Makes sense, sure. And then, snake oilers rely on their moxie and chutzpah, right? It's a tame snakes. Their fearlessness to extract potent oils from those snakes, and their cleverness to manufacture and sell potions made from those oils. You've heard snake oilers are doing really well out west since the cows came home. Everybody needs potions and hope in these dark days, and also out west is where all the best snakes live. Yeah, so... That's fun, first off, I have to say. But yeah, we're gonna go with Cow Puncher. Because I think, again, most fitting for Grizzly Walker. This is my room, everybody. Waz did a move. Cool, look at me moving. Alright, do I click on things, though? Yeah. You read the spine of one of your books. Lucas Swift and the Mystery of the Terrible Tower. I love that one. The Treasure of the Cursed Barn. The Journey to Eagle Cabin. Trouble at Rattlesnake Cave. That was one of my favorites. Jim Danger and the Forbidden Castle. Rufus liked this one as much as I did. Escape from Skeleton House, etc. Okay. Hello? Hey, Russell, how you doing? Ka. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. I'll give you a cricket. You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He coos appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. Um... Are you gonna die if I leave you here? Yeah, like, maybe I should... Maybe I should let you go. You open your bedroom window, not pictured, and unlatch the door to Russell's cage. He winks at you, calls one last time, then flies away to the west. At least I didn't kill him. I didn't get him killed. That's good. Goodbye, desk. I'll comb my hair. I got one experience! Heck yeah! Cool, alright. Alright, I guess we're going then. <laughs> it's very quiet now. What did I do? I guess I stacked that. Nothing on the hat rack today. Cool. Uh, can I put the fire out? Nope. Alright. Gonna miss mom's cooking, always. It's mom's pie save. It keeps all her pie safe. That's good. You pick up one of your- ah, One of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Uh, I don't know German. Anyway. Okay. 
cool. And toys here. Yeah, let's check it out. He loves stuff like this. You got an item, a uh, puzzle cube. I got like a Rubik's cube kind of thing. Cool. All right. Let's uh, leave. I don't understand that room much at all. All right, hello. Your mom smiles warmly as you approach. I'm leaving now, mom. We're gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I got you a present. A present? Yep, it's that book you wanted for Crimbo. I don't know what that is. I know it's early, but the one about picking locks, oh boy. The one about desert survival, oh boy. The one about bartering, oh boy. It would probably be good to know how to survive in the desert. That's the one. Enjoy. You got an item. Desert eating and drinking. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you. I will, Mom. Goodbye. All right. Cool. Checking that. Can I read this? Yeah, the foraging skill. This book contains everything you need to know to turn the harsh, unforgiving desert into your own personal buffet. And the best part is that the buffet also has an open bar. Read it. Yeah. You read the book and learn all sorts of tricks for squeezing extra stuff out of cactuses and whatnot. You got a skill foraging. Nice. Unfortunately, while practicing your techniques, you accidentally squeeze the book into book juice, which it turns out isn't a real thing. Aww. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I could fiddle with the puzzle cube too. I got an experience! Your brother already had it, also voice saw, but you figure out the last couple of moves. That's cool. Hooray! Go me. Alright, and I still have it. You've already solved it, and if you mess it up again, it'll be messed up forever. Oh yeah. Good point. <laughs> cool. Okay. No time to screw around in the woods. Hey, are you my brother? Oh, that's my father. My bad. Your father morosely jabs at the haystack. Time for me to leave, Dad. His lip quivers a little. Listen, I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's brass knuckles. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, his hat really doesn't fit that well, does it? Good, good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Goodbye, Dad. All right, cool. I'm gonna equip my brass knuckles. Right, they're already equipped. Cool. Damage four to five. Heck yeah! These were your grandmother's brass knuckles. Your grandmother was a force to be reckoned with. That's cool. There's my brother. Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. Give him his puzzle back. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Say goodbye. Hey Rufus, time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? Um. To help people, to seek my fortune, to get off the stupid farm. You know, Grizzly Walker is all about helping people, I think. You've read the papers, Rufus. The people out west are in trouble. They need all the help they can get. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go west get killed within a year. And that statistic is from before the cows came home. Oh, that's not good. The cows came home, that's a big thing. <laughs> I'll be okay. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad, I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so, I still think you'll be dead by Crimbo. I'll miss you, Rufus. Okay. You give him a playful punch on the ear. <laughs> Goodbye, Rufus. It's been fun. I got a needle. Heck yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go. Bye, guys. Yes. Look at that horse. Not gonna lie, when I first saw it in my brain, I went, look at that cow. I know it's not a cow! <laughs> That's just what first came through my mind. Anyway, look at these opening credits. I'm going to leave them so you guys can see the names of these people. Because they made this game and they deserve recognition. I mean, I don't know if the game's good yet. So far, I've been enjoying it. Um, but, you know, hey, if you make a game, yeah. Your name, you know. I'll let, I'll let credits play. Uh, I mean, like... I personally don't care to see the name, so this part's boring for me, but, you know, I don't want to... See, normally when there, there are credits at the end, and that's when I'd like talk about the game while the credits are playing, but 200 miles later. Obviously, that wasn't the case this time. Dirt water, 300 miles. Okay. I'm gonna get off, though. Thanks. I'm gonna eat this turnip, question mark? Well, the bad news is that you fell off that cart and got knocked out for a couple of hours, and now you've got no ride, no meat, and no prospects. The good news is that you're in a town rather than in a gulch somewhere. Not much of a town, though. Get up and dust yourself off. The town of Boring Springs. I want this. And it was a turnip. I was right. Heck yeah, go me. What is this thing? All right, what about you, drunkard? Beg your pardon, mister. All right, cool. Ow, Dak Nabbit. All right. <laughs> Let's go into... Oh. Chunk wood from milk? Yeah, grab it. I got a broken board. Cool. Is that a weapon? It is a weapon. 
Speak softly and carry a crude stick. That's three to four, though, and I have four to five, so I'm gonna keep that. Cool, and the needles for picking locks, apparently. Nice. A sign on the door reads, Gone drinking. Is it this dude? Might be this dude. As you walk into the saloon, the crazy-eyed guy sitting up to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, Dag Nabbit? Well, I... You can't drink in here without a hat. It ain't proper. He points to the take a hat, leave a hat box next to the door. Okay. You look through the hat box and find a sturdy looking Stetson. That looks like something you'd wear. Cool, you got a 94 gallon hat. You grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, sir. Pete! Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy, nod. Say, feller. Yeah? You heading west? If you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Well, er, no pressure. <laughs> Alright, I'll keep it in mind. Cool. Uh, so that was this dude. Oh, you can't see my mouse. It's this dude right here that I'm like, yeah, that I was standing awkwardly behind. Cool. Let's talk to these people. These two are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how to play poker card that came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. I don't have any meat. Darn it. Good luck, you two. What about this spit? It's a spittoon. People spit into it. You know, without even looking in it, that it's absolutely disgusting. Look in it. Yeah, it's full of spit. Regular spit, gross tobacco spit, chewing gum, and it looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting. And the smell! Even from a distance, it smells horrible. You are now on your hands and knees, peering into a filth-encrusted spittoon. I don't... I don't understand what's wrong with you. Wait, is there something shining at the bottom? Get it! <laughs> you reach your hand toward the spittoon, even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air. Like a greasy fog enveloping the stinking brass horror. It smells like the vomit through a mesquite barbecue eating... Er, the vomit trough at a mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. Never surrender! You plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes a sound like glop. Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. Search! I got a nasty ring. Heck yeah. Your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's terrain slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring. Probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations? You got a nasty ring. Hooray! Let's look at it. Nasty ring. Hey, plus one muscle, plus one mysticality, and plus one moxie. Yeah. Let's see what these are. Muscle determines how much damage your melee attacks do, and how much damage you take when you get hit by melee attacks. For example, if an attack against a bandit would normally deal or do three damage, but your muscle is one lower than the bandits, the attack will do two damage instead. Okay, so it's not a plus one to damage, but if my muscle is higher than their muscle, then it is. I think, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna go with that. Mysticality determines how much damage your magical attacks do, and how much damage you take when enemies use magical attacks against you. For example, if a spell you're casting against a skeleton would normally do 3 damage, but your mysticality is too higher than the skeleton's, the spell will do 5 damage instead. Okay, so it's not just are you higher or are you not, but it's how much higher or how much lower are you. Right? I assume that's the same for muscle here? Moxie. Moxie determines how much damage your pistol attacks do and how much damage you take when you get shot by enemies. For example, if a ranged attack against a goblin, the goblins are in this game, okay, it would normally do 3 damage, but your moxie is 1 higher than the goblins, the attack will do 4 damage instead. Okay, good to know. Um, so... My health still seems full, I assume. Cool, that's good. Hey, feller. You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back of to the back wall reading, Reward for Lost Mugs, 25 meat each. The bartender finally notices you. Howdy, cowboy! Howdy, barkeep! Name's Grizzly. What brings you to our little backwater? Or backwater. Ask about work. Oh, the usual. I came out west to make my fortune. That's not true. I mean, I guess like I'm asking about work, but like I told my brother, I came out here to help people. <laughs> Uh, not having much luck so far, though. Any work around these parts? Unfortunately, Boring Springs already has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend talking to the railroad people up by dirt water. Okay. The railroad? The Manifest Destiny Railroad Company, from back east. They're trying to run a line into Frisco and having a heck of a time doing so. And they're hiring? Oh, I reckon they're always hiring for one thing or another. Big company, that. Fair enough. Dirt water? Sir Water is interesting. It's far enough west that it's still more or less exempt from the rule of law, but not so far west that it's been burned to the ground by the, <laughs> the darn cows. Lots of opportunity there. She pauses for a second, lost in thought. Yep, if I were a younger woman, I'd probably head that way myself. 
Ask about errands. You mentioned errands? Yeah, this Forsakenberg has always fallen apart in one way or another. The hostler is always needing help since he hurt his leg. I assume it's a hostler. I don't know. And that no account sheriff, sheriff could certainly stand to have somebody doing his job for him. Anything else? Well, I've got a goblin loose in the basement. Some cow, po cow poking from the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. Yeah, you can probably handle a goblin. Let's try it. Much obliged. I'll unlock the basement door for you. Oh, and you'll need this. Okay. Weak fungicide. Let's see what that is. Um, the liquid in this can is actually very powerful. It's just that it's tailored to kill weak fungi. What? Okay, fair enough. This item is used in combat. Effective against goblins. Cool. Howdy, I'm Grizzly. Howdy, Grizzly. I'm Horace. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the town hostler. I don't know what that is. I'm the town horse selling guy. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> uh, how's that working out for you? Oh, those horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming? Nice. No, I mean the horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. Oh, <laughs> is that why you're here drinking instead? Uh, yep. And me being in here drinking instead of watching the horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious circle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One. Kind of a boring one, but it's got four legs and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay. I don't have meat. He's gone. I don't have meat, though, so I can't really afford it. So, oh well. The woman glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. You know, fair enough. Hey, piano man. I should probably leave him alone. Fair enough. I can do that. <gasps> it's a goblin! It's a goblin over there! Oh my gosh! Okay, Paul Volk newspaper. I'm gonna take one of those. You got an item, Boring Springs Gazette, April 20th, 1895. Let's check it. This is a copy of the Boring Springs newspaper from about six weeks ago. Okay, cool. There's whiskey. Um, a creative nurse brand whiskey. Good for what ails ya? Heck yeah. I guess we never established your age. Good thing the legal drinking age here is can reach the top of the bar. <laughs> cool. Let's check what that is. This whiskey is too cheap for you to even consider drinking it. Oh, and given your legendarily low standards, that's really saying something. I did reach into a spittoon for a ring. Uh, Riark. Okay, I'll fight him. Yeah, attack. All right, good. Bam, I showed him. Ow, he kind of hurt me. Well, good, I mean, one more hit ought to do it, right? Nope, I was wrong. Oh, maybe I should have used that fungicide or whatever I had, but I didn't. Oh well. Having dispatched the goblin, you pat yourself on the back for a job well done. You gain three experience. Yeehaw, skill up, muscle level two. Yes. He left spores everywhere, though. You hose him down with that can of fungicide. Oh, okay. So why do goblins, why are they like fungal, you know? I don't understand that yet. Howdy, howdy, good to see you, see you again, Grizzly. I can speak. You tip your hat to the bartender. Took care of that goblin. Yeah. Thank you kindly, Grizzly. I, oh, I got two under meat from that. Heck yeah. I knew you was a stand-up feller the moment you walked in here. She reaches under the bar and grabs a bag of meat. Here you go. It's the least I can do by way of thanks. Tip your hat. Um, let's get a beer mug. Yeah. That's Susie. She's a rancher from nearby. A real tough broad. I ain't recommend you pester her. Why is that? Lost her whole family to a cow attack recently. Got some pent-up frustrations about it. Ouch. Okay, that's fair. Hey guys, I'm gonna play. Can I play it? They look at you nervously. Look, I have some meat. Let's play. You put 20 meat on the table and sit down before they can say no. One of them shuffles the cards sloppily and deals a new round. You get a pair of tens plus a two, a three, and a king. What kind of poker is this exactly? Is this hold'em? I'll bet aggressively. Yeehaw, I'll bet 15 meat. They look at each other nervously, but they both call your bet. Okay, read them and weep. You show your pair of tens plus two, three king. The guy on the left has a full house. Ah, two jacks and three aces. And the gal on the right somehow got a straight flush. Two through six in hearts. Am I being hustled here? Intimidating what? I'm gonna intim- Nah, I'm here to help people. What? You explain the jacks are worth 9 points each, giving the guy on the left a total of 21 points and the gal on the right is 20 and you're 25 plus the king. They squint at the rules again, but eventually shrug and nod at you. You collect your winnings and stand up. They thank you for helping them learn the game. 
I decided not to intimidate them because I came here to help people and I ended up making them worse at poker. But I got more meat, so... Hey, you know, silver lining. <laughs> Here's the Sheriff. Hey, Sheriff. Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Boring Springs. I'm the Sheriff in these parts. The what? He sighs. The Sheriff, okay? Blasted sign painters. <laughs> Say, you wouldn't happen to be looking for work, would you? As a matter of fact, I am. Great, because I happen to have some. There's a gang of hoodlums around here what call themselves the Fricker Gang. Last time I arrested one of them, they busted him out and took my cell door with them. It ain't, uh, well, it ain't much good without the door. And? And I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch it back for me. Why don't you do it? You're the sheriff after all. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that, because I'm sending the deputy along with you to keep you out of trouble. He takes a pistol out of his desk and hands it to you. You've got an item deputy pistol. Oh, that's the, that is the deputy, oh, okay. Deputy? You deputize the gun? You're new in town, maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much to do here except drink. Here, let me write down where the Fricker Gang's hideout is for you. <laughs> he makes a little note on your map. You discovered a new map location, the Fricker Gang's hideout. Got it, I'll be back with the door. Can I read these things? Wanted for bird theft, naked Mike Bernstein. 200 me, okay. Um... Wanted poster artist. Apply in person at the Yuma Marshal's office. Okay. And for face thieving, what? This is a fricker person. Hmm. 420 meat, you say? Dirty mug. Heck yeah, I got it. Wait, didn't someone over here want mugs? Wasn't that a thing? Did you want mugs? I found this mug. Hey, I got 25 meat. Oh, I'll take it. Cool. Well, the mission accomplished, I reckon. Yep, that's true. Okay. Maybe I should take that drunkard with me, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, what do you say, Pete? Who, me? Well, heck, I say all kinds of things. For instance, thunderation, some claim jumping, scrab shangle, drank my whiskey. Oh, uh-huh. Pete takes a swig of his whiskey. See you later, Pete. I guess he's not actually coming with me. Never mind. I thought I'd try. <laughs> Trade? What do you got for me? Step right up, step right up! Braid's the name and trade's the game! You seriously doubt that his name is Braid? Howdy. Howdy, Braid. What are you trading? Well, sir, today I'm trading locks for soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. Oh, I, I have a needle. <laughs> and to the cunning skinner who brings me three rattlesnake hides, well, to that adventurous soul, I will trade a fine silver pocket watch. I'll take some dynamite, yeah. Braid, which is so not, <laughs> which is so not a name, takes your needle and hands you a stick of dynamite. Be careful with this now. All right, I got dynamite instead. So looking at that, um, speak softly and carry a loud stick. This item is used in combat. Damages an enemy in combat and is sometimes useful outside of combat as well. Examine it. You examine the dynamite. It's got an end you light, and an end that blows up. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Do I have the means to actually like light it up though? I don't know. Also, there it is. Oh! I didn't know it just teleport me. Hold on, I want to make sure I'm, like, done here. You know? Yuck, maybe I shouldn't step on that stuff. That's gross. Alright, there's Braid and his trade stuff. This is closed. Cool. Alright. You're a person. You approach the weird Cactus Man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, Cactus Man! Howdy yourself! And the name's Bill. Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned me into a cactus. Doc Alice warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill? No, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> oh, does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know, being a cactus? Oh, <laughs> no, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation proce er, processes inside the cactus part of me keep me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. <gasps> I have a newspaper! You don't happen to have a newspaper or anything? Yes! You gave him the newspaper you found in the basement of the saloon. Much obliged, partner. Now let's see here. What can I do to return the favor? Oh, I know! My shovel! I left it behind the outhouse at Orhole Mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Hey, where is that exactly? Behind the outhouse at Orhole Mine. Got it. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now, if you could just kind of stick that newspaper to my face before you leave. <laughs> stick the newspaper to him. Ah, look, he's even holding it. That's great. Okay. Uh, you're not allowed in Topeka anymore, remember? No, I don't remember that. Some loose dirt. I need a shovel! Alright, but I don't know where that is. So for now, the gang hideout. 
I think I should let him sleep. So, yeah. Cool. I got 25 meat, and a recovered mug, and a pair of silver cufflinks. Ah. Is that just for trading? If you wore fancier shirts, you might have some use for these. Am I wearing any shirt? I'm a stick man. It's hard to tell. Alright, I guess I'll go in. You gotta be sneaky, Charlie. Oh, crap. He has a gun. They both have guns! Don't mind me. I'm just gonna go over here. Crap. You cautiously approach the Frigger gang. They're pretty engrossed in their poker game, so it doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel and eavesdrop on the conversation for a while. The one with the eye patch is quiet, but you gather that his name is Snipe, and that's and that the squirrely one is his brother Wimpy. What's your play here? Leave without alert. Wait, leave? Oh, oh, okay. Never mind. Approach them and talk. Howdy, boys. Deal me in. The one without the eye patch raises an eyebrow. Who are you? How'd you get past Thud and Soapy? What do you want? Um. Uh, uh, who's Bimmy again? I don't remember who Bimmy is. Okay, but like, okay, if those two were Thud and Soapy, and these two are Snipe and Wimpy, I'll s maybe, yeah. It's me, Bimmy, your brother. He squints at you. Bimmy? You ain't Bimmy. Um. I am so, Bimmy. I stole some Reeb's face. Ha! You always did have a knack for face rustling. What's new, Bimmy? Because remember, we read the wanted poster. <laughs> we gotta get out of here and fast. Yeah, uh, Wimpy, the Pinkertons are onto us, and they'll be here any minute. Dag nabbit! Come on, Snipe, let's hightail it! I'll catch up. <laughs> I'll catch up with you guys later tonight. Wimpy nods. He and Snipe hurriedly pack up their belongings and flee the cave. You congratulate yourself on your attentiveness, memory, and strong interpersonal skills. <laughs> you gain 10 XP. Yeehaw! Skill up, grit level 2. I don't even know what grit is. I mean, like, in this context. Scrap the door and skedaddle. Can I check that? What's my grit? Is that my HP? I don't see anything else over there, you know? Oh, I never even checked four gallon hat. Plus one muscle. Heck yeah. Cool. Okay. Um. Just gonna grab some things while I'm here. Alright, well that's the end of that. Cool. Anything in this? One of the frickin' boys is dozing in a bathtub. Um, let's tie him up. You grab a nearby length of rope and carefully tie his hands together and then to the handles of the tub. The sheriff can come collect him later. You got a perk honorable. Okay. What does that even mean? How do I check other things? Like, where is honorable come up? And is that just here for... Oh, there's... Duh. There's this too. Grit. Okay. So, the extent to which you are truly gritty, the higher it is, the tougher you'll be. At this level, plus 30 maximum HP, plus 1 stomach capacity, pain tolerance, 1. At next level, plus 40 maximum HP, plus 2... Okay. So... Let's see, tough customer. You're rough and tumble... Yeah, you're rough and tumble, rowdy and ready to rumble. This level, plus 1 melee attack damage. The next level, plus 3. Ooh, that would be cool. Okay. Oh, oh, at like 2. 2 out of 7. Then I'll get plus 3, right? I think. Okay, cool. Um, yep. You know how to live off of land by extracting food and booze and potions from the cactus parts of the land. Um, oh, and next level, high quality goods from cacti. Okay. You have a way of getting what you want. Perks honorable. Let's see, you've got a strong moral compass and an accurate ethical protractor. Honorable options will be available in some situations. Cool, okay. And then beef up. Tap into your inner wellspring of beefiness, temporarily increasing your muscle. At this level, AP costs 1, increases muscle by 2, which essentially increases damage by 2. And does that also decrease damage by 2? I'm not sure. And then first aid. Whoa, hey, in the West, doctors are few, far between, expensive, and poorly trained. You've decided it's safer to take matters into your own hands. At this level, AP costs 1, recover 15 HP. Like, that seems really significant because, like, max AP right now, for the grit thing, right, was plus 30. Yeah. Well, plus 30 maximum HP, so I guess that's not like your max is 30, but plus 30 maximum. Um, but the goblin dealt 3 damage to us over the course of that fight. Granted, it's a very beginner fight. It's the first one. But still, like, healing 15 with one turn? That seems pretty good. I mean, yeah, time will tell. All that. 
Is the dude still sleeping out here? Also, I got, oh, I got a mug of cactus beer from that, cool. Um, Thud Fricker, the Fricker Gang's intrepid lookout, appears to be taking a little nap. Sure, I'll wake him up. I was gonna tie him, but I guess I can't do that. Um, hey, you're not supposed to be here, Thud is. Well, let's say he's no Rhodes Scholar if we assume that it's seven years from now and that idiot makes sense. Uh, you feel bad about the idea of killing him. Alright, walk away, Thud. Thud, you don't want this life. Take a hike. Okay, you're probably right. <laughs> Thud stumbles off into the desert. He'll probably be fine. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so I guess I'm going straight back to the sheriff's set. Ugh! And I'm gonna... You know, actually, while we're here, I might as well turn in these mugs. Yeah, 50 meat, thanks. Thought I'd say howdy. Yup. Goodbye. Hey, Sheriff. Got you a door. So, I see the Fricker Gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you rescue my door? You hand the Sheriff his door and he hangs it back on its hinges. Nice work, stranger. This here prison cell just got about four times more secure. Are there any Fricker Boys left for me to round up? Yeah, one or two that are asleep on the job. I'll go round them up shortly then. Looks like I owe you a reward. He produces a big bag of meat. You gain 400 meat. Got another little task for you if you got the time. Should be a lot simpler than the last one. Really? What you need? Well, the Frickers busted the lock when they took the door. Gonna need a new lock. I'll keep an eye out. So, I could still just like walk in then. I mean, I can't, but without a lock. In game, I could. You know, the cell looks much better with its doors back in place. More celly. Yeah. But see, look, you can see the, the Bimmy Fricker for face thieving. That kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. We paid attention. Cue outro, go!